ruckus. So, we're going to start a new discussion today about how to manage our emotions. What does it mean to manage your emotions according to a biblical perspective? What are some examples that we can use? And how does it equate to our spiritual living and our lifestyle on a daily basis? Go ahead, grab a pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, because guess what? We're about to jump into this topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of unnecessary fluff or distraction. Today we're talking about how to control our emotions, how to be in charge of our emotional response without letting it control us, how to walk in the spirit without letting our emotions control our, our flesh's appetite and allow our flesh to go stronger than our spiritual response. So how do we know this is supposed to be what we're doing in the first place? What is a, a biblical example or a scripture passage that shows us that we're supposed to lean on living and letting our spirit come forth instead of letting our flesh distract us? Well, remember in our past series, Distraction Series, we did talk about this briefly and how the flesh and the desires of the flesh can become a distraction to us living in the spirit. But let's take a look at a biblical example that's going to help bring this to light as well. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look at verse number 17 first uh, and we'll begin to expound on that first. So, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 reads, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18, But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So what is this passage telling us really? For one, we see it tells us that the flesh and the spirit are in contention. The flesh and the spirit do not operate according to one another, but against one another. They're opposite appetites. So if one grows stronger, the other one is growing weaker. If one goes weaker, the other one's stronger. But it also gives us some key information there as well in verse number 18. It lets us know that if you operate under the spirit, if you're operating according to the way God has set us to operate, then you're not under the law. How does this help us when it comes to controlling our emotions? Because it's showing us the proper way to look at things as far as the law is concerned. I think the Israelites kind of missed the understanding of what the law was for. So they thought it was more so of a checklist of if you do all of these things, then that uh, that will say that you are living a righteous life. Those are the conditions is what they looked at it as. Instead of looking at it as if I live a righteous life according to the spirit, then it will be evident by this list of things that I do not do in my life. In other words, it's the cause and the effect. Instead of thinking the cause is, I followed all of these things listed by the law, so now the effect is I'm righteous. It's really the cause is I'm living a righteous lifestyle, so the effect is my life does not display all of these things that are listed in the law. So if you live according to the spirit, you're automatically going to obey the law because it's just what comes from living a righteous lifestyle. Well, what does all this have to do with emotions? I'm glad you asked because 
your fleshly desires are going to lead to one reaction to your emotions and a spiritual lifestyle will lead to another. So let's continue in Galatians chapter 5 where we can see this. We're going to jump down to uh, verse number 19 and we'll read down to verse number 21. Galatians 5 and 19, it reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such of the like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So what do we get from this passage? We're looking at what comes from operating in your flesh and responding to your emotions from a fleshly manner. All of these things are going to be byproducts of just moving based off your emotion, uh, allowing your flesh to control you. These are going to be the, the type of responses you're going to get from living that type of lifestyle. So we all we already see because of what the outcome is of that lifestyle, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. So we already know that's not the outcome that we want. So what happens if we do the opposite? What happens if we operate in the spirit? And, and if we allow the spirit to take control and respond to our emotions based off of what the Holy Spirit has placed in us, then that would show what we call the fruits of the spirit. Which if we continue on in, in this Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 22 and 23 and it's going to break those down for us. So Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, it reads, But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law so we see in this passage man 22 and 23 there in galatians 5 that the fruits of the spirit or the holy spirit operating inside of us allows us to respond differently to emotion than if we were living based off of our flesh and all of the things that the spirit is going to embed in us. It's going to lead us to righteousness. The things that the flesh would embed in you. Is going to lead you to a lifestyle that will not grant you access to the kingdom of God. So in this introduction uh, to our discussion. What does controlling our emotions have to do with our lifestyle? And how does the scriptures tell us we should do so? The first thing that we've gained by looking over Galatians chapter 5 and looking at a few of the different scriptures here is the importance in knowing why we should control our emotions or what it means to control our emotions. Controlling our emotions wouldn't be so much as us ourselves, according to our own efforts and our own strength, controlling uh, how we respond to our emotions and, and uh, going based off our emotions to our feelings and, and then controlling our thoughts and our actions. That's the way the world teaches us, right? But more so, what this scripture is showing us is that truly controlling your uh, emotions in a way that's going to lead you to the kingdom of heaven, lead you to righteousness, it is allowing the Holy Spirit to show you how to interact and how to respond to those emotions. And then you'll be able to uh, gain a character that is of God, which is the fruits of the spirit we saw there in Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23. So it's very important to understand this as a foundation as we continue on to discuss how to control our emotions because now we know we're talking about from a spiritual aspect not from a physical aspect or the aspect that the world may try to present to us, but we're doing so in a way that's pleasing to God. 
in that same chapter, uh, the scripture tells us if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. So we know that we worship a God who is spirit and we, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. That word worship means to bow down or to submit to. So we must bow down to a God who is a spirit by bowing down with our spirit, not with the response of our flesh. So controlling our emotions, uh, as we say uh, for believers, that, that's done in a spiritual manner, not uh, based off of our fleshly response to our emotions. Well, man, I'm glad that we can start this topic off and we're going to get into some different emotions, how you control them. Uh, we're going to get into some biblical uh, examples of people who dealt with such emotions and, and um, the wrong way they, they handled it and the right way they handled it. We'll take some key nuggets of things we should and things we shouldn't do when we're discussing controlling our emotions. And remember, everything we're discussing is from a spiritual standpoint. But let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to continue to embark in our study. Uh, we thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to continue to give us good um, topics to research that uh, we can really dig into the scripture and dig into your word to find out uh, where you are leading us in these, um, these topics in our lives. Uh, we thank you for this because this allows us to apply your word to, to our lives currently and in a way that affects us and help us live a better lifestyle according to your will. Uh, we ask this that we can be vessels to be used by you. Uh, we pray that any sins or transgressions we may have committed knowingly or unknowingly, dear Father, that they be forgiven and help us to repent. That means to turn away from those type of lifestyles, to live a cleansed and righteous lifestyle after you. We ask this not that we get any honor or glory, but you get all the honor and glory out of our lives. In Yahshua's precious name we pray. Thank you, Father. It is done. Well, there we have it. The introduction to how to control our emotions. I'm glad we can start the topic off this way because now we're leading directly to the spiritual aspect of the conversation. And it's going to open up a lot of things that's going to help us as far as our daily walk, our daily lifestyle. I know it's going to be helpful to me personally. So I'm excited to what the Holy Spirit has to show us in this series. But we'll continue this series next week. But always remember, until next week, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.